Thanks for joining us for another conversation. Today, we will be speaking with head of Digicel Business, Garrett Quinn, to talk a little about Digicel Business. Garrett, thank you for joining us. How are you? I'm great. Thanks very much. It's a beautiful morning in, in Kingston, so why wouldn't I be great? <laughs> Wonderful. So, Garrett, tell us a little bit about Digicel Business, please. Sure. Digicel Business is a $300 million business that caters to the GSM and ICT needs of corporate customers. We have about 720 dedicated professionals that work specifically for Digicel Business in the group, and we operate in all 23 markets in the Caribbean and Central America. Um, we have grown over the last three or four years uh, at a pace at which is effectively faster than any other part of the business, and we would uh, expect that trend to to continue in the foreseeable future. Um, and it's worth noting also that we're present in the South Pacific under the leadership of Gary Cobain, uh, and we work together um, on an ongoing basis to make sure that there are shared learnings across both regions. Great, great. The world has become so much more globally connected, so terms like cloud and the Internet of Things seem to be emerging hot topics. So what do business customers need from Digicel Business? Well, I think uh, to understand Digicel Business, I need to tell you a little bit about uh, our history. We've been serving postpaid customers for as long as Digicel has had mobile networks. And then we started an ICT business about six years ago. Um, shortly thereafter, we bought a systems integration company called Netsar out of Puerto Rico. And this company had field staff in a number of our markets, and we subsequently integrated that staff into our organization. We then built a data center, and we started investing in fixed networks and cloud services. In 2012, our ICT business had... Uh, measly revenues of $11 million. And this year, uh, ICT revenues would be north of $155 million, uh, which is roughly a 14-fold increase over that um, period, which is really, truly extraordinary growth in our industry. Uh, and I suppose today, from a revenue perspective, uh, it's, it's interesting when you break that down a little bit. Um, we are primarily a connectivity company, so both mobile and fixed connectivity. We have over 300,000 postpaid corporate subs in our base. And about 80% of our ICT revenues is recurring fixed voice and data connectivity services. But Digicel Business is not just a connectivity company, right? Absolutely, yeah. We're, we're, we're a cloud and infrastructure business as well. We design, build and operate technology solutions for customers, whether it is in unified communications, security, data center, business applications or managed services. And in reality, the, the fun is truly just about to start in, in, in ICT. If I could tell you a little bit of a story, I'm in, I'm in technology about 20 years, 19, 20 years. Uh, I started in the software industry, then moved to what's, what's called IT services. And, and now I find myself in telecommunications and ICT. Over that period, uh, I've seen the rise in technology, um, you know, during the dot-com years, the mobile revolution, you know, the social and now cloud. I, I truly believe that cloud represents the biggest shift in the technology industry over that period. And I fundamentally believe that uh, it, it will transform the way business is connected uh, for years and years to come. It's companies like Amazon, Apple, Google, and of course, Microsoft are global leaders in providing cloud services to consumers and businesses alike. And in reality, traditional industries, as we know it, are changing this. We're at a point of inflection really from an industrial um, perspective that the, the world has ever seen. I mean, if you think about Uber, for example, you know, that, that has radically changed the taxi industry. Good, bad or indifferent, 20 percent of the entire um, taxi industry is now, you know, the revenues associated are flowing towards Silicon Valley who provide technology enabling, you know, individuals to scale, to become a taxi, uh, a taxi company effectively. So, but, you know, cloud is having a transformational impact in, in, in business and in traditional business from the servers that we use, uh, the applications that we use, the productivity we use, most are now migrating and being run in the cloud. Why is that? Cloud is basically about scale, service, and cost. You know, um, cloud services can be delivered to you as a, as a customer, whether you're a small customer or a large customer, at a scale and a level of service that would be completely impossible for you if you were to do it on your own. So if you think, for example, uh, of Amazon Web Services, um, you know, a reasonably experienced IT manager can use her credit card to rent a virtual server in the Amazon Cloud 
and she could have it provisioned in a matter of minutes. Um, if you think about how difficult that might have been in the past, she would have had to find the service she wanted to buy, you know, work with the account manager to, to figure out a specification on that, price it, order, ship it, clear it, configure it, deploy it, et cetera, et cetera. It would have taken weeks to do it. Um, and now it's actually, a, you know, a process that can take only a matter of minutes. Uh, but more importantly, the, you know, the process that has taken thousands of dollars as opposed to a few dollars, um, you know, from a cloud from a cloud provider. And that just means that businesses can spend, you know, our customers can spend more time focusing on the things that are important to them, improving the service to their customers. And I believe that's the, the transformational impact. The, the thing that I really find cool about this is it's enabling small businesses to compete. You know, up to well over 90% of the business footprint in the Caribbean and Central America is, is, is the small business type. You know, the company that has less than 50 employees. And I now believe that cloud represents, you know, an area in which they can open up their services to a whole range of new markets uh, and therefore helping, you know, the, our economies, the, the local economies to grow. This is all great, but how is it impacting Digicel business and your customers? In two ways, uh, I believe. Um, cloud is nothing without fast and very reliable connectivity. Um, we, are, we will and uh, we continue to roll out the best connectivity solutions to our customers, not just in this region, but comparable to any region in the world. Uh, so we will actually enable uh, the cloud for businesses in our region. And secondly, cloud just won't be about you know, the simple example of the virtual server. Um, in reality, there's a complex stack of services and products that we can sell to our customers that require discussion, design, build, operate skills uh, that we're perfectly positioned to do because we're based in region um, uh, and deliver for our customers today. For example, you may have heard about public, private and hybrid cloud. Um, the Amazon Web Services example I gave previously was about public cloud. And for many reasons, whether it is, you know, data protection, technology complexity, existing applications, uh, it's often difficult and sometimes possible for, for businesses to run their, their entire business from the public cloud. It's only by working closely with our customers to understand their needs uh, that we can determine the right solution for them at that moment in time. These all sound like fantastic opportunities. So how is Digicel Business planning to take advantage of them? Yeah, we've we've started. Um, we've started very aggressively now. I'm in the role, just so you know, about three months um, and uh, haven't had a, a night's sleep since I started. No, I'm kidding. Um, it's been great fun. Um, we haven't really told a lot of people of what we're actually doing. Uh, you know, we've spent um, the team that we've, we've, we've pulled together now at group uh, level has spent the time really getting a deep understanding of the ways in which we need to transform Digicel business. And I suppose, you know, they can be broken down uh, for people to understand in, in really three ways. Um, so people get an understanding of exactly what's important to us. And the three themes uh, that we're focused on are what we call reach, depth and service. Reach being the, the number of customers that we serve and how we increase that. Depth being the types of propositions that we bring to our customers and service being the experience that we provide to our customers. So if I could spend, you know, just a minute uh, on one of those, it's I, I would I would I would pick the service side. And, you know, normally our customers interact through us um, or through the sales team uh, for the first time. That we have a sales team of of north of three hundred and fifty um, sales guys and girls in the region, um, in the Caribbean and Central America, and they have primarily grown up um, selling mobile services to our customers. You know, um, and whether you're focused in the small business sector, the enterprise sector, or even the government sector, it's true to say now that the propositions that we're bringing to our customers are a lot more detailed and complex. And they really require our salespeople to have an understanding of our customers' businesses, our customers' plans, their strategies, what issues and pains they have, and how to advise them of the best solutions to improve their business. So the skills of solution selling across our markets through uh, the current stack of propositions, or the future stack for that matter, is a key focus for us now. And we've started working very closely with Jennifer Carnegie um, and her team in HR to deliver on that aspect of the transformation plan. That all sounds really exciting and a positive outlook for Digicel Business. Um, but outside of reach, depth and service, which I now understand, what other things would you like to see change in Digicel Business or see Digicel Business contribute towards? Well, there are two main areas, I think, you know, in digital business, we need to really invest in our communities from a technology perspective. Um, you know, we need to bring the skills and abilities to our schools and communities 
uh, that we serve and that we're working and, and, and we're currently working, for example, with with our foundation to do just that uh, and to be part of the change that's required in the Caribbean and Central American region to become a more serious ICT player on a global basis. I mean, ICT today, you know, can represent 20, 30, 40 percent of a, of a country's GDP. Uh, unfortunately, today in, in the Caribbean uh, in particular, it's only it only really represents a few percentages and, and, and we need to make that change. We need to we need to be a part of, of seeing that that actually can improve. And um, the second thing is I would like to say um, in relation to to change over time within Digicel business is quite frankly, the ratio of, of females to males or males to females, whichever you want to say. Um, it's not right just now where, you know, technology is, is, is not a dull, staid, boys and their toys kind of area. It's really transformational and, and interesting and thought provoking in so many different ways. And, and honestly, the skills that we need in digital business today and the future will include skills in, in software development, you know, program management, uh, business analysts, data analysts, program managers, design engineers, technology um, consultants. So we actually need to achieve what is more and more a normalized mix of of males to females of 50, 50 uh, percent type in order for us to be better, to be better what we do. Very true. Very true. But how can the wider business help you to meet these objectives? Yeah, well, you know, I, 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 the I Am Aware program is 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 tremendous and it is giving people the opportunity to to in some cases get back to basics to learn exactly what we do on the mobile side, both prepay and postpay. But you know, Digicel Business are fully supportive of that, and I understand there's a Digicel Business program uh, lined up very, very shortly. And I would encourage everybody to be involved in understanding what we do, how we do it, and uh, you know, because that will that will really help people to get a, a better, deeper understanding of the the products that I've touched on today and how we're serving our customers. Well, this was a lot of very useful information, which for me was as refreshing as it was informative. And I'm sure it was the same for others listening in. So thank you. Um, Thank you very much, Garrett. Thank you. And thanks very much for our colleagues for listening. It's really appreciated.